So did you know that there are tons of different types of lunges, right? So think single leg squat variation. And in cheerleading, we do lunging quite a bit. Have you ever done a round off? Have you ever done a hurdler? Do you work on dancing? Do you run? All of these things have some sort of lunge variation involved with them. And today we're gonna go over the proper way to do lunges so that when you're working on them, either with your strength and conditioning or when you're doing them in your routine, you're doing them properly and you're not gonna hurt yourself. So stay tuned. So in our last video, we talked about squat mechanics and how to properly do a squat and why it's also so important. Now, the lunge, in my opinion, is just as important for cheer athletes as the squat, especially for our flyers. And the reason for that is it loads the body or puts stress on us in a strength building way with one leg, things like liberties, heel stretches, arabesques, all those things. Uh, lunge strength is going to help us to improve those. So we need to make sure we're doing them right whenever we're using them in our conditioning or even as part of our warm up. So just like our last video on squats, we're gonna start from the bottom and kind of work our way up to teach you how to do proper lunge mechanics. And additionally, if you're a coach, you can use a lunge test where you're watching how your athletes do lunges to give you some insight into areas that they may be weak that also may be translating into why they struggle with certain body positions or certain skills in cheer. So starting with our feet. Now with this, our squat, we talked about our feet should be about shoulder to hip width. For our lunge, we want to make sure that we're keeping some distance between our feet as well. One common mistake I see is that athletes will get in front of themselves, one foot directly in front of the other, which is not great because now I've really got no room to work. It puts me off balance and it's really not proper mechanics uh, for the body in general. So even when we're lunging, we want to have some width between our feet. It doesn't have to be huge. You wanna to go too wide unless we're doing a side lunge, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. But for our front and back lunge, we wanna have some width between the feet as far as how far they are apart. Now, when we step, one thing that we wanna make sure of is we're not going too far forward and allowing this back hip to open. This is gonna change the mechanics of our lunge and it's gonna give us poor body patterns and poor movement patterns, poor movement positions. Um, so we wanna eliminate that. So when we're looking at how far forward we should step, we want to make sure that we're keeping our hip closed. From here, the goal is we want to keep our torso upright as we lower down. So if I'm too far forward, we're gonna notice that I get a forward, a forward bend here, not quite what we're looking for. If I'm too narrow, I may see that my knees are shooting forward. Again, gonna affect how my torso position's not, not the most ideal. So what we want to do is we'll step forward and we want to position ourselves to where as we get to the bottom, our front and back knees are in a 90 degree position. So kind of shaped like this. And that would look here and then back up. Now different variations of this, we have a step forward lunge, which we would step forward and then step back. We also have a step back lunge where we would step backwards and back up here. Either way, we want to make sure the torso is upright and our foot positioning is being is, is equal like we talked about, a little bit of width here and making sure that our knees are getting to that 90 degree position. Now one thing we want to avoid as far as our knees go, we don't want the knees to track too far over the toe because we're gonna get off center. And also, if you're a coach, you want to make sure that your athlete's knee is not collapsing in like this as they do their lunge. If you notice that when they lunge, they get unsteady and we're collapsing here, what that indicates is that they're weak in one of the muscles in their glutes. That is a big indicator for when our flyers are unsteady on one leg. That glute muscle is very, very important in keeping them stable when they stand on one leg. So you can actually use this test to see, are my top girls strong enough in their glutes to hold one leg in the appropriate way? So if you have all of your top girls in a line and you have them step forward here, and we see straight, that's good. If we have our top girl step forward and our knee collapses in, that tells us that there's weakness in this muscle, which should be positioning the knee back over the foot. So it's a really easy way for you to assess if your top girls are strong enough in their glutes to then be able to stand on one leg without hiking or without sagging like this. With our lunges to the front and back, again, all those cues, very, very important. When we get to our side lunges, or as some people would call them, a Cossack squat. 
We want to keep our torso upright and we want to maintain those same hip and knee mechanics that we talked about in the front squat or the front lunge. We want to make sure our knee is tracking over our foot. We don't want to collapse in. We don't want to be aggressively driving out. So as we're doing a side lunge, we would basically step, keep the knee over the toe here, back to the middle, and again here, keeping our knee over our toe, torso's upright, back to the middle. Things we commonly would see are if we get out here and that knee wants to collapse in, again, indicating that glute or hip weakness, or if our torso drops a whole lot, that tells us that the athlete is not comfortable staying upright and they're relying on the front of their leg to support their weight versus being able to sit back into that lunge. Again, the lunge is a great exercise and it's also a great tool to evaluate how your athletes move and define where their weaknesses are. So use these cues either in your conditioning, make sure you keep an eye on your athletes to make sure their technique is good, or use it as a tool to evaluate if they're actually strong enough to do the skills that you're asking them to do. Hey, thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope that the lunge explanation was helpful. It's a really great tool, it's a really great exercise, and believe it or not, you can get an entire workout done with lunges. It's really, really easy. So if you'd like more videos like this, click the link above. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, the link's gonna be right here, and hit the bell for notifications so it lets you know when our next video comes out, which I hope you join me on. If we'll catch you, and I'm stuttering, so we're gonna go ahead and end the video. All right, we'll see you.